damn cutthroat. What's up though? My main opponent got me in jump rope. Still want your main component of looking dumb though. I'm humble. Let me just mumble if only jump up. I'm stuck though. From East Oakland, so I am cutthroat. What's up though? My main opponent got me in jump rope. Still want your main component of looking dumb though. Uh, I'm humble. Sure. Let me just mumble if only jump up. I'm trying to generate some energy, so please, if you please, be generous with the Hennessy. I mean, if you mean on the mic, you was a friend of me. I lean into meanings of life. Like, are you kidding me? Give me some tree and a pipe. I'll start admitting things. Isn't just the ugly and nice that's feeling hindering. Couple shit in front of my eyes is steady rendering. Don't got a clear picture. Won't ask a clear swisher. I'm off that. Get that tobacco up off my back. My cough back. Coffin's hella cozy, matter of fact. The off ramp been closed so often for the revamp. I'm heaven sent. But my guy forgot the stamp, so I'm stuck here. Brooklyn to Brooklyn, I don't know better. Lately it's been hard knowing I'm from better weather, but it's grind time. Ain't no gully than gritty. Word to Kerm, cause these niggas gon' figure deal me. I'm stuck though. From East Oakland, so I am cutthroat. What's up though? My main opponent got me in jump rope. Still want your main component of looking dumb though. I'm humble. Let me just mumble up only jump up. I'm stuck though. From East Oakland, so I am cutthroat. What's up though? My main opponent got me in jump rope. Still want your main component of looking dumb though. I'm humble. Let me just mumble up only jump up. Check. This the anthem for the mumbling man, for the hungry homies who hustle cause ain't no other plan. Be an understatement if I told you that I overstand. Trying to bag the beat but my drummer gone, I lost my band. Lucky almost left me too, said she met a nigga who got to know what to run through. I've been stuck with nothing new, just anxious insecurities, worries for the birdies beat. Never taught the birds it beats, stingers never murdered me. Singers haven't heard of me, stay just steady curving me. I'm just smoking in Berkeley, Brooklyn broccoli is dirty green. Produce hella gully, I'm just trying to get my health on. When the boys come knocking. You know I'ma get my stealth on I'm stuck though From East Oakland so I am cutthroat What's up though? My main opponent got me in jump rope Still want your main component of looking dumb though I'm humble Let me just mumble up on the jump up I'm stuck though From East Oakland so I am cutthroat What's up though? My main opponent got me in jump rope Still want your main component of looking dumb though I'm humble Let me just mumble up on the jump up Yo, 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 what's good? Greetings, salutations, peace, love, and blessings to all of y'all out there, and the warmest welcome to this second release of Youth Speaks Unified Anthology titled Between My Body and the Air. My name is EJ Walls, and I'll be serving as your host for this event as we uh, enjoy the presence and are blessed by the words of some incredibly brilliant black poets tonight. I am currently the lead poet mentor at Youth Speaks, and I have the honor of serving as one of the editors of this publication. Um, and I just want to say it's been an immense pleasure to have been part of something so special, and I'm just extremely grateful that we're able to share it with you all now. So. From wherever it is that you are tuning in from, why don't you let us know in the comment section what you rep, uh, where you calling from, where you joining us from, and who knows, maybe you got a neighbor that's up in this space too, and that would be pretty cool to see. So let us know in the comments where you're joining us from, and while y'all do that, would be a great time for us to uh, make sure we get a land and labor acknowledgement before we begin, right? So we want to acknowledge that here in Oakland, we occupy the stolen land of the Shoshenyo Ohlone peoples. We give honor to the village of Huchin and the Lishan waterways. We mourn the ongoing genocide of native peoples, which America was violently founded upon. We recognize that native peoples and their movements are alive today, affirm our continued commitment to supporting indigenous resistance, and encourage our audience that if you're not already aware, to do your own due diligence to find out the names and the stories of the native peoples whose land you are joining us from tonight, and to contribute in whatever ways you can to their movements and their causes, whether it be material, financial, um, spiritual, or in other whatever form you may uh, contribute to these movements, because as we all know, 
Uh, no matter where you are in the United States, you're likely standing upon sacred stolen land. And it is our duty and responsibility to contribute to the efforts to return ownership back to the folks who to whom it rightfully belongs. Right. So as we acknowledge the indigenous peoples who have and continue to live here, steward this land and resist settler colonialism, we also acknowledge that this country has been built on the forced labor of African people through violent, systematic abduction from our homelands and enslavement over hundreds of years. We acknowledge that the impacts that this has had on African descendants throughout this country's development up until the present day and I personally would like to extend that acknowledgement to address our lineup of all black performers tonight. So as we gather for yet another virtual event, as has become somewhat of a norm during this unprecedented pandemic, we recognize the ways in which celebrating, grieving, learning about, or even simply observing black history has been commodified in this country. We reject the notion that black history can be bottled up into one week, one month, or even one whole lifetime, knowing that we are experiencing black history in real time during every waking moment of our lives, right? So we implore folks to expand their own perception of what it means to honor the legacies and lived experiences of all black people um, in this country and beyond, right? So black history is not simply a costume or a documentary or a statement on behalf of or a contextless Martin Luther King Jr. quote to push a politic of respectability or invalidate our hearts shrillest cries for justice. Black history is rage and also joy. It is laughter and also sorrow. It is infinite, unmoved and eternal. And I cannot imagine any better way to celebrate Black History Month and witness the broad spectrum of black life experience than from the performers that we're about to hear from tonight. So if you can get down with that, wherever you are, say Ashe, say I right, then, say let's get it. Okay, okay. So just to drop a little bit of uh, context about this here event and the anthology, uh, the Youth Speaks Unified anthology titled Between My Body and the Air is what happens when crisis prevents us from gathering in person and we bring the noise online. So last year, y'all know the world was turned upside down and the same could be said for our events and activities here at Youth Speaks. So as we were revving up for our epic week-long Bay Area Unified Festival, uh, we obviously were met with the circumstances of social distancing and sheltering in place. And due to that, all of our programs pivoted to the internet from our weekly after school writing workshop, all the way to our biggest festival over the summertime called Brave New Voices. So in an effort to stay committed to our mission of providing space for young folks to be heard, we decided to create a publication that could serve as both a time capsule for that roller coaster of 2020, um, as well as a celebration of the just incredible talent and wisdom and foresight that emerged in our online workshop spaces in the spring that the young people were bringing. So the Unified Anthology really allowed us to reimagine what it could look like to have youth poets from all over, not just the Bay or the country, but different parts of the world in conversation with each other, right? And if you would like to hear, know a little bit more about that, I encourage you to check out the foreword of the anthology written by our director of programs and the curator of this event, Gabriel Cortez, um, a little quick preview of that is that here young poets from west oakland dap hands with poets from brooklyn kingston prepares a bowl of ramen for denver while st louis sits behind her and braids her hair uh, much like our online writing workshops this collection has become a mirror held up to the world uh, we chose the title between my body and the air because it reflected a question that each of these young authors addresses in their own way what does it mean to navigate the world in this body where even the air has finally turned against me right so tonight like i said we have some of those published youth poets right here in the virtual building and a couple of incredible feature performers that are going to help us answer that very question as well as celebrate the highly anticipated release of the physical version of this anthology so many of y'all know the ebook the digital version has been available since our last release back in november but we got physical copies y'all and we are so juiced to share them with you so before i bring these young people to the stage i gotta make sure y'all know how to show the poets some love you feel me so long ago, on a planet far, far away, <laughs> we used to all be able to gather in the same room and we could show love with a shout, a snap, 
some claps, a knee slap, a mmm, a come on, a go in poet, all the verbals and the nonverbals and things, right? So obviously here in this space, we gotta do what we can. So please, please, please use the comment section, drop lines that you love, drop affirmation to the poets, praise them for their work and let them know how it makes you feel. And ultimately, if you wanna show love, you can buy the book, but I'm gonna tell you how to do that just a little bit later, okay? So we about to get this show started because I know I've been talking just enough so tonight, you're going to be hearing some poetry by six authors in our anthology. Their names are Quinn Edlin, Samuel Getacho, Damani Thomas, Javen Mortal, Jaira Martin, and Erzabek Gonzalez, as well as two of our incredible feature poets, Imani Cezanne and Safia Alelo. All right. So if you're ready to get this thing cracking, please help me show some love for our first three poets of the night, Quinn, Samuel, and Damani. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody. My name is Quinn Edlin. I'm so excited to be performing with all of these beautiful poets tonight. And I'm so excited to be in this anthology. Um, it is so wonderful. And I'm going to go ahead and read my first poem. It's in the anthology. It's called Find the Fire, Flee the Ghost, I Can Scream Too. The distance between my body and the air is worth contemplating. Sometimes I remember my own name. Sometimes I remember my own dread. It is close. It yells. It is there in the dark too. There is nothing louder than empty. There is nothing louder than an empty room. Lie frozen and don't let the bed sheets tussle with each other like a weak fight. Arrange the water glass next to the stack of books. They will sit quietly, turn the TV off, pause the wind blowing through the windows and make cement the blinds. Still, I scream. Still. It screams, enough to twist eardrums into rivers. I think my late uncle turned the TV back on, floated in to remind me about childhood and lightness. I laughed, and the world of spirits became softer. This poem opens up the most chaotic of rooms. I turn around and watch it become fire instead of me. I have been doing this for what feels like years. I have been doing this for three months, feel my skin, how good and cool and flowing. If I were a ghost, I would certainly linger. Move a mountain of grain in a kitchen jar into a different jar. Drink all of their wine, lie in their bed, remake it but without the throw pillow. Start the laundry and leave it wet in the washing machine. They would laugh. That's our Quinn. At every family dinner, I might throw the food onto the floor for the dogs when my father wasn't looking, or he may worry that death doesn't feed me well. Ghosts don't have tummies. He does not need to know this. Forgive me. Forgive me. Um, my last poem that I'm going to read tonight is going to be uh, the poem called I Get Out. Um, it is um, inspired by Miss Lauren Hill and her song, I Get Out. Um, and here it is. Knowing my condition is the reason I must change. Lauren Hill. The illness is smarter than me. Doctor says I will turn a frail mess if nothing is done. No use for poems in a rot brain. Letters make sense, but words feel like stinging nettle, the way they scrape when they mean stop, or is there a god? Pen begets writing, begets pouring, begets the battle. One too many bouts of this. It will not wither with art this time. Oh, my poor head, my poor head. Conditioning myself to no change. Poems do not distract me enough now. I have no will for discomfort. Mercy is the last thing I am allowed to cry for. Every day I cry. Do you know this? Every day. Not a song nor a loud wind in sight. How crammed the bird wings are arms to ribs. I saw sun today. So did the bird with a death chirp. It only lasted for a short minute. 
I read my grandpa's poems under it. Changing under the condition that I must survive while doing so. Imagine my skin is a zipper. Undo myself and float like air. It is impossible to be alive and quiet at the same time. So I will fall asleep, but I'll leave my lamp on. It reminds me to dream about something toiling and then still forgetful of the operation, the warp it was stuck inside. This is to say that time applies only to the condition. Move against it and oh, it will swallow you whole. Um, this is all that I have. Thank you so much. I'm so excited for this beautiful celebration of poetry. Um, and I feel so lucky and grateful for every single person um, that put this anthology together. There was so much hard work and there um, should be one million celebrations of each and every one of them. Um, I love you speaks. I love you all. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and good night. Hi, my name is Samuel Gaetancho. Uh, I'm 18 years old, and I am going to be reading two poems, um, one of which is from the anthology um, my, Between My Body and the Air, and uh, another one that is not from the anthology. Um, the first poem um, that's in the anthology is called On Joe Biden and the Exceptional Negro. Um, this was a piece that I wrote earlier last year, uh, means a lot to me. I think it helped me process a lot of my own feelings about my work, my poetry, um, and, and how that affects my relationship to the world. So yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read some poems for you guys. On Joe Biden and the Exceptional Negro. We've got to recognize that that kid wearing a hoodie may very well be the next poet laureate and not a gangbanger. Joe Biden on the issues of racial profiling and mass incarceration, June 2019. After I submit my application for National Youth Poet Laureate, I exhale in relief. At last, the chance to have my worth validated, my life quantified. Ever since I was a child, I have been told I am exceptional. I am not like the others, I am different. How thrilling to be raised on the myth of individuality, how misleading, how egomaniacally delightful to know that when the floodwaters come, you will be saved. To walk among the sea of regular Negroes, gangbangers, hood niggas, thugs, super predators, deadbeat baby daddies, a god amongst men, a man amongst boys, a boy amongst slaves, how blessed am I to have the opportunity to prove once and for all that I deserve freedom. Prove that my wrists are too delicate for bondage, my hands too inclined for the pen if I die. I know they will show my grade point average on the evening news. How blessed am I to have a resume worth mentioning in the headline? How blessed am I to be a viable candidate for martyrdom? How lucky am I to be able to write myself into a place on the porch, a seat under the table? How blessed to be graced with the possibility of scrounging scraps as they eat above me? How lucky, how lucky. How lucky. Thank you. Um, so yeah, that, that was my first poem. Um, and the second poem actually was also written um, last year, at a d different time last year, um, when I was in a very different headspace. Um, so yeah, here it goes. Uh, this poem is called Justice For. <laughs> I tried to write a poem for George, and Brianna, and Tony, and Elijah, and none of them made it past a scribble, past a draft, past the passing thought that I could leave the name and the details blank, and this would be the same poem that I've been writing since I was 14 years old and I am so tired. 
of explaining why I'm tired of viral videos in an America that says that if she does not get to watch a dying man's last breath, that if she does not get an open casket funeral, a published photograph of the corpse, she cannot say for certain if he lived or died, of an America that says that if she does not get to watch the bullets enter his heart in real time, then she cannot be certain that he wasn't too loud or too tall or too resistant or cannot be certain that he did not deserve to die after all, see legend has it. That if you resist your oppression, I mean resist arrest, America will kill you in cold blood and then turn around and offer her condolences to the family, offer black squares and kneeling cops, offer apologies from the institution built on your bones, send your family to a funeral and then ask why they weren't present for the political process, continue to build rooms and name them after you with no intention of allowing your people inside. I am so tired of explaining why I'm tired of yard signs and street murals, of MLK quotes out of the white moderates he fought against on MLK boulevards in every state of a union that assassinated him and in every major city of a country that will kill you only to give a teary-eyed eulogy at your burial with its knee still on your children's necks. Thank you. This poem opens with a quote from the FBI's Black Extremist Records. The purpose of this new counterintelligence endeavor is to expose, disrupt, misdirect, discredit, or otherwise neutralize the activities of Black nationalists, hate-type organizations, and groupings, their leadership, spokesmen, membership, and supporters, and to counter their propensity for violence and civil disorder. Black extremists have a conversation with Pro, and I mediate the conversation with silence. Can we have a discussion without mentioning paranoia? The dead bolts that button the door, panic sweats, remembering the aliases we created was exhausting. Am I a stranger today or tomorrow? I have so many names in mind you'd think I belong to a family tree that did not end in a government's all timer history. What about the government? Y'all are just a bunch of grown up puppets. No, we do not work for, we are. We, meaning every tool of the state and then some allies, your favorite double agent, interracial coalition, forged letters, broken security, wiretaps, a secret intimacy. The last time you whispered I loved you might have been your last if we weren't so forgetful. What prayer did you hide in that day? Was it the third verse or the second? Define black extremist. You give property the right to speak and it tries to blow up a country. If we were property, then explain the Klan. Explain lynchings. We didn't see lynchings. Just an expression of the first. Who are we to stop a sacrifice to some cloaked deity? Even this religion has taken God in the mouth and spat out racism? No. Our interest? National security. Their interest? Defending white this country. It's beautiful, honestly, to have an act of violence made to protect you. Are you nervous? What does talking to an empire feel like? Suffocating. Like paranoia has forced itself down your throat. How are you everywhere and nowhere at once? What city haven't we invaded? Code name, Christian Phoenix. What that mean? I erase your into burning cross that ignites the neighborhood. Bible story, matchstick, and gasoline right hand in court. The one you haven't cut off yet. To protect the good, good citizen. A mass hysteria that can speak for itself. What have you though done with those we haven't found? Why hold on to the past? It's been more than 30 years. If you haven't found a body for the obituary, jar a scream and call it a day. If you will not answer us, will you confirm a document? We found this in an article. Quote, if they can't misdirect them, they just kill them. That's the rule. That's the history of the United States government. End quote. I refuse to answer any questions concerning secrecy. No document will claim the origin of me.
Is this true? When I think of freedom, I remember every white person I'm afraid of has a name that escapes like a supervillain. Reagan. Bush. Mm, mm, come on, that's how we get the show started. Y'all serious? Gotta, I gotta pat the mic down because it's on fire over here. Oh my goodness. Thank you, poets. Thank you, poets. Thank you, poets. If y'all heard Quinn say there is nothing louder than an empty room, if y'all heard Samuel dispelling the myth of black exceptionalism, if y'all heard Damani say you give property the right to speak and it tries to blow up a country, ugh. Or if any of these three poets said anything else that deeply resonated with you, please drop some love in the chat. Say we hear y'all. Say we love y'all. Say we needed this. And um, may we continue to hold space for um, the multiple truths, right? The very unfortunate truth that this country has spent centuries creating new ways to disrupt and restrict black life. And the very promising truth that voices like the ones we're hearing from tonight are equipped to fight back against that oppression and inspire others to do the same. So thank you, poets, for getting us started tonight. So fortunate. Y'all definitely got to check out that work. And speaking of what y'all would have just seen in Damani's voiceover video was a preview sneak peek of, yes, y'all, the physical copy live in the flesh, real deal, holy field of our anthology. So we're going to have some details to announce for y'all very, very shortly on how you can get your hands on a physical copy of the anthology. And in the meantime, want to encourage you to head on over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash youth speaks or shop.youthspeaks.org, which is where our digital ebook is available for purchase for $15. Um, as you saw in that third video as well, Every single poem um, has a written copy in the anthology as well as an icon that you can click on or scan um, in order to watch or listen to the poet spit that poem. So it's definitely a really awesome interactive experience. I want to encourage y'all to enjoy that. And um, while we're here, you're probably, you know, knowing if you like me are blown away by these performances so far and already wondering how you can get down with the next dope Youth Speaks publication you are in a bit of luck because today we are officially opening the final submission window for the Youth Speaks Unified Mixtape, all right? So the Unified Mixtape is a special audio project uh, we are using to document the soundscapes of our times and uplift the most urgent stories that the world needs to hear right now. So um, if you're interested in how to submit and getting the details, head on over to our website where we've got all the instructions for how to submit and we'll be um, continuing to make announcements throughout the spring about different workshops you can attend um, to support your process of trying to submit to the mixtape. Um, and actually, one of those ways that you could do that, right, you might be thinking, huh, I want to create something I want to submit, but I don't know where to start or I'm not too sure. That's all right. We got a space for that. So every single Wednesday from 3.30 to 5.30 p.m. Pacific time, we have free online writing and performance after school workshops for folks 13 to 19 years old. All right, so come on through. You can register at bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash register for Y-S. Um, that's register for F-O-R. Y-S, and it's all lowercase. Um, that's where you can register for any of all of our programs and make sure you click that after school workshop joint and you'll get an email every Wednesday with how you can um, tap in with the Zoom access info and things like that. Um, but outside of that, whenever you want to plug in, um, get tapped in with us, you can visit our website, youthspeaks.org or follow us on any of our social medias at Youth Speaks. And um, yeah, just trying to continue to, to build throughout this year and make incredibly dope things with y'all so i said my piece made my little announcement and i think right now i gotta ask if y'all are ready for our first feature of the night and i'm gonna go ahead and answer this for you no you're not ready but you better get ready because we about to get absolutely floored okay because in the building with us we have the one and very only imani sazan y'all imani sazan 
is a black writer, performer, and tamal connoisseur <laughs> living in Oakland, California. In March, she became the 2020 Woman of the World Poetry Slam champion for the second time. And in July of the same year, she was named a 2020 Ruth, Lily, and Dorothy Sargent Rosenberg Fellowship finalist. Ooh, you know what I'm saying? Big teams, big teams. Uh, as a two-time Pushcart Prize nominee, Imani has forthcoming work in Nimrod, Fugue, Red Wheelbarrow, Crab Creek Review, and Poetry Magazine. All right? Published down here. You know what I'm talking about? So um, while we are, while all are welcome to enjoy her work, Imani writes for black people, black readers, and is committed to the liberation of all oppressed people. So if you are anywhere near as excited as I am for this feature, why don't y'all go ahead and help me give a super warm welcome to Imani Cezanne. Imani Cezanne. I am here to, well, first and foremost, I'm here to celebrate the youth, the youth dim, and uh, this new anthology. I'm really uh, excited and honored and privileged to um, have been able to read it in advance of the publication so that I could blurb. And this is actually my first blurb, so I hope that you liked my blurb. Um, but it's been really exciting for me um, to just participate in Youth Speaks and to be involved uh, with the work that everybody is doing there. I'm not going to talk too much. I do have some poems to share, but I just, like I said, wanted to first and foremost say congratulations for the anthology and thank you for allowing me and asking me to participate um, in this way, both um, as my as a blurb writer and as somebody, um, you know, who's coming to share some poems. Um, I'm going to share some newer stuff, which I'm really excited about. Um, this first poem um, that I'm going to share, it's kind of a downer, to be honest, but we're going to pick up the energy at the end. <laughs> um, but it was really important for me to share, especially during this time, um, during this these times, right? Um, because so much of what I read in the anthology was about um, the, just the difficulties of being in a pandemic, right? Because <clears throat> there's no writing that happens uh, between March of last year and whenever this is over, right? That isn't directly tied or informed by the pandemic in some capacities. And so I'm going to read that for you all right now. Worst case scenario. I die while my body reds the concrete. Bare hands sweat heavy and quaking while panic spills from your mouth and I am stuck here, panting, waiting to happen. Meanwhile, all my faults sit casually. Maybe there are worse traditions to follow than dying on the way to anywhere but here, looking for any now, but I am another name thrown into the pile. Even if you tell my mother I planned for this, she'll still crack. But God is always on time, so I ain't dead, just on schedule. While the evening news broadcasts my last breath, we wonder how can we call ourselves gods if our children grow up to be dead before I wake. I pray the Lord my soul to polish and turn to coin and travel toward the light looking for a place not white so we'd be not black people, just alive. And, and I want you to know I tried. And I held on as long as I could. Now the other side says, You die, and I have to pluck the lead out of your chest. And an apology I do not want turns to foam while the car runs on my behalf with a lit blunt burning in the ashtray slow and black and mild like an innocent nigger that inhaled then exhaled and because a cracker cop ain't want us breathing you do not get to smile or cry or shout or say goodbye before i unclench your hand i promise to remember to resist to fight to talk slick walk just like we practiced and pray yes Pray to all of them. Buddha, Allah, Jah, but you still do not rise three days later or four or five. And when I hand the bullets I rescued from your rib cage to your aching mother, I'll explain that we were not the wrong bodies. 
not the wrong color. We just could not outhang the lynch. But I tried. I really did. I swear. And now this is uh, both sides together. I die while my body reds the concrete. You die and I have to pluck the lead out of your chest. Bare hands sweat heavy and quaking while panic and an apology I do not want turns to foam. Spills from your mouth and I am stuck here panting while the car runs on my behalf with a lip blunt waiting to happen. Meanwhile, all my faults sit casually, burning in the ashtray, slow and black and mild. Maybe there are worse traditions to follow than dying like an innocent nigger that inhaled, then exhaled on the way to anywhere but here, looking for any now. But because a cracker cop ain't want us breathing, I am another name thrown into the pile even if you do not get to smile or cry or shout or say goodbye you tell my mother i planned for this she'll still crack but before i unclench your hand i promise to remember god is always on time so i ain't dead just on schedule to resist to fight to talk slick walk just like we practiced and while the evening news broadcasts my last breath we pray Yes, pray to all of them. Buddha, Allah, Jah, but you still wonder, how can we call ourselves gods if our children do not rise three days later, or four, or five, and when I grow up to be dead before I wake, I pray the Lord hand the bullets I rescued from your rib cage to my soul to polish and turn to coin and travel toward your aching mother. I'll explain that we, we were the light looking for a place not white, so we'd be not black not the wrong bodies not the wrong color we just people just alive and I want you to know I tried and I could not out hang the lynch but I tried I really did held on as long as I could I swear thank you um yeah I appreciate y'all listening and being here um for that for that poem for that piece so this last poem um it is my love letter to oakland <laughs> um it's uh right now published on uh, in poetry magazine december's poetry magazine and so you can find it on the poetry foundation website um it is a um hyperbolic um uh what is it it is a hyperbolic response to the gentrification of Oakland. Um, I think my father uh, was born and raised in Oakland. I live in Oakland and yep, it's called I Want to Punch All the White People in Oakland after LL Cool J. <laughs> I want to punch all the white people in Oakland in the mouth. Serve up a cold brewed left hook, smooth and black and right on time. Now, I'm not a violent person, but I know a little something about fear. And if you scared somebody's going to pound your face into a cake pan, you might think twice before getting up the nerve to come knock down my door like you the damn police. Talk about my weed too loud, my bass too funky. If you ask me, them sound like fighting words. Somebody going to lose and it ain't going to be my black ass laid out. It's going to be your jaw cracked, your mouth split and bursting onto your dockers and even your mama won't recognize your ugly mug eyes so swollen and pulsating you really won't see color I said I will beat you up leave a scar big as your trust fund anybody got a problem I'll knock them out too look like y'all out of gas and ain't a station for miles so welcome to the east where you can't show up unannounced uninvited empty-handed ill-intended because you may not make it out of all the ways to draw blood my favorite is on purpose from the descendants of my colonizers I'm not violent, but you came up in my house, ain't wipe your feet, ain't greet my granny. How you gonna ask me if I'm supposed to be where I'm at? Gonna go out your way just to get in mine and think I won't knock your nose into next week. Think I won't snatch that N-word from out your snout. Yeah, I'm talking about you and your nasty pug all up at the taco truck. Triple filtering selfies after protest, swerving in and out the bike lane on your way to do the work during these times. But I know how to deal with y'all. 
Mama taught me to raise my fist like an empty high rise next to a bus stop that someone calls home. She said, don't come back in here if you lose. So this ain't a threat. It's just affordable housing. Don't you dare knock unnecessary hustle. This is past due process. This is self-defense against the kind of vicious crime that you can point to on a map and say, I remember living there before they knocked the black out. Thank you so much. I appreciate y'all. This is for the healers. Mm hmm A moment, please. Artists. How can we call ourselves gods if our children grow up to be dead? Goodness gracious. You bet. Imani, thank you. Thank you. And thank you again. Thank you for the truth. Thank you for the rawness. Thank you for the real. Thank you for giving language to some of the hardest feelings there are for us to feel during these times, as you said, um, exploring what it might be like to not be black people, just alive. You know, I think that's uh, something that folks often wonder and maybe don't articulate, but I appreciate you for, for going there um, and taking us with you, you know, and also side note, as a resident of the deep east um i especially appreciate the denunciation of nasty pugs at the taco truck uh, hashtag housing for all hashtag housing is a human right hashtag keep oakland oakland hashtag keep oakland black um and yeah you heard it so imani spit that truth appreciate you and y'all we only have three more poets from our anthology about to rock for us tonight before we get to our second feature. So I need y'all to help me show them some love, okay? The next three poets that we gonna hear from are from San Francisco, San Francisco, and San Leandro, respectively. So y'all help me welcome uh, Javen, Jaira, and Erja Bed. Beow, 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 what's happening? Some days, San Francisco becomes an asphalt desert. Corporations like vultures feed off exploitation. Broken glass from shattered integrity sinks into the crevices of the sidewalk like bones swallowed by sandstorms. This concrete consumes more than just debris. Displacement lowers homeless bodies into the belly of San Francisco. Struggle and depression breeding everywhere you look. Cigarette smoke clouding brown and black kids' futures into a grayscale. Their lungs decaying into a darker value than their skin tone. They misplace their youth in San Francisco's fog. Through the thick layer of CO2, you see hatred bloom through flowering fists. Fights between kids who grew up around mean mugs and frowning faces. Two young boys, arms propelled by an airy word. Raindrops of sweat and spit pitter-patter on the street surface like a violent storm. This is war at stalemate. Bullets colliding, tanks exploding, two soldiers shell-shocked with elbows locked and in position to clash like samurai cross Bushido blades. But instead of for honor, they fight for the dignity of having strong will and stronger shots with power pack punches launching until one falls. What I'm trying to say is these streets turn people against their people, make brown boys into brown men prematurely, got people of color losing their lives before they even have one. Sometimes, I have to cover my little sister's eyes or close my own. My body, a shield protecting her from the corruption of our city and the bullets they send our way. Our city that values money over the people living within it. City where we all starve with different forms of hunger. The toxicity of the air, a seasoning to the full course meal of existence. Difficult to exist when gentrification rids our streets of its color. Like a pressure washer whitening the walls that keep us distant. Our dream deferred becoming a dream deterred. The modern Victorian houses sitting on steep hills that hide winding streets, once bustling with people of color, now flooded with pain and poverty. You see, San Francisco is the tourist attraction that everyone comes to see, but never truly sees. Behind the beauty, you see the brown people that originated here, that built this city, broken and damaged. The bay bears a billion bodies, 
underneath highways and skyscrapers. Cable cars halfway to the stars cause us to forget the people on the ground. We leave our hearts in San Francisco because they tear down our homes and tear our families apart. That much pain is bound to cause cardiac arrest. Home of the rock called Alcatraz, surrounded by shark infested waters. But the sharks ain't the only thing bloodthirsty in this city. San Francisco's jaws and endless teeth leave us bleeding unconscious. Apocalypse, masked behind refinement and redevelopment of both buildings and people. Concrete jungle we call a city of trees, of exhaust fume foliage, cold days and colder nights. Emptiness consumes what should be a clear blue sky, like emptiness devours the soul of all hope and faith. It excretes isolation and hate festering in the pits of citizens' and stomachs. This city turns people to waste and homes to white wastelands, the best and worst place to live. Kids jumping in front of Bart and Caltrain. It's a cruel reminder. You can't hear the sound of suffering over the sound of construction. Brown and black corpses keep this landmass afloat. So I try to find time to thank the land and those that carry it, knowing that one day that'll be me too. Hi, my name is Jaira Martin. This piece is called Next Destination. I step onto the leaning bus, push my body down to sit at the window seat. My naked eyes wander through the plexiglass and I see crooked sidewalks, draining pain out of baby's hearts and savoring it. I see blood running through the cracks of concrete, the veins of brown bodies laid deceased. I see bullets with no names, words in black letters that spell out caution. I see Intersections being blocked off in streets, I see blue and red lights flickering, sirens wailing over the agony of a mother's heartache, I see death surrounded by bodies of life, one city outlined by a body of water, I see drug dealers selling high hope, addiction sold as medication, I see brown minds enslaved to green nugs and green paper, brown minds bashed in with bats and broomsticks, I see brown eyes. Hidden behind orange jumpsuits, black lives. Hidden behind pre-recorded lies, I see. The same finger that clicked the gun being called a mother's son. Teenage bodies laid in caskets. Faces, goodbye. I step off the leaning bus. Hold my naked eyes up to the sun. It smiles at me, kisses my skin, and says, welcome back home. I'm 17 years old and I'm from San Leandro, California. Today I'll be sharing three poems, two of which are from the anthology. So my first poem is entitled Bears and it's about my grandmother. The women in my family fight bears. We are very protective. Generations learning the arts of not falling into the traps we set. The women in my family fight bears. No, like literal bears, like black bears with claws and teeth, like, like bear bears. My grandmother. We called her Julie, built a bed in the greenhouse and set up air traps on her own so we could protect the chicken coop. I spent childhood summers training to save those chickens because nothing was happening to her children. I mean chickens. Julie was a collector. Mama says Julie didn't collect things, she collected people. When we passed, we had to have three memorials across state borders. All we did was eat and swap stories from her collection, like how she wandered down the beach naked with Jane and Corey playing some sort of bagpipe. She was the firecracker that drew everyone in was the way she spoke. You couldn't retell her stories, you could taint them. Her hands held so many lives, so strong, they built forts and bear traps. I used to pray to be in one of her stories. 
Now I'm left to tell hers. I come from a family that fought bears to protect the chicken. The house is empty now. Weeds over one where the raspberries grew in the chicken coop is dead. The house is owned by weeds and knee-high grass, the redwoods and brambles. The wilderness destroys her legacy and the home there's nothing left to protect, nothing worth fighting for, nothing to take when the bears return. Thank you. Um, so my second poem is entitled Omnipresence, and it's a haiku, which is a poetic form which is composed of three lines, five syllables in the first line, seven syllables in the second line, and five syllables in the third line. Omnipresence, noun, not a gift for God, but the human refusal to be confined. Thank you. And my third poem is entitled When We Colonize the Autobiography of White America, and it's a contrapuntal. And a contrapuntal is a poem that can be read three ways. One down the left column, two down the right column, and three all the way across. One, when we colonize. Black and brown love is holding our crooked spines and owning the air which is dancing between the ammonia and weed on environment. Ungentrifying and rebuilding our sovereignty. Making a home of the quick stop on Estadio. Refusing to apologize for taking up space criticism like artists we credible. Radiance embodied and having spines of steel and renaming the true heroes. Two, the autobiography of white America. An act of revolution, fighting against oppression, then becoming the oppressor. A land of life and death is declared home, claiming stolen lands to manifest our destiny and naming it good. Writing our own history with black and brown bodies removed to make melanin invisible, claiming the narrative ours has always been easy. Three, when we colonize the autobiography of white America. Black and brown love is an act of revolution, holding our crooked spines and fighting against oppression, then owning the air, which is becoming the oppressor. Dancing between a land of life and death, the ammonia and weed on Bart is declared home. Ungentrifying and reclaiming stolen lands, building our sovereignty to manifest our destiny, making a home of the quick stop on Estadio and naming it good, refusing to apologize for writing our own history, taking up space with black and brown bodies, criticism removed. Like artists, we make melanin incredible, radiance embodied and visible, having spines of steel and reclaiming the narrative ours. Naming the true heroes has always been easy. Thank you. Lee, man, all right, y'all. I already had to put out one fire on this microphone today, and I guess I gotta do it again because those three poets did not disappoint. They did not come lazy. They did not come light. You feel me? That pen game is not nothing to play with. Stay sharp. If you heard Javen reaving his beloved hometown, if you see in your own city what Jaira sees in hers. If you were inspired by Erzabeth's recalling of her bear fighting foremothers or anything else touched you from those last three poets, you know how to let them know. Hit up the chat, drop your favorite lines, tell them you love them, because we love you too. Um, and that's exactly how we get down. Thank y'all so much, for real, for real, uh, Javen, Jair, Erzabeth, for blessing us. And we're going to keep it rocking and rolling with our second feature and final performer of the evening so if you got any ounces of energy left in you we need you to expel that right here right now to help us celebrate this last feature y'all safia el hilo is the author of the january children girls that never die and the novel in verse home is not a country co-editor of the anthology halal if you hear me uh, she is a wallace stegner fellow at Stanford University and lives in Oakland. So I need y'all to give it up in your living room, uh, in the car, wherever you at. Okay, make some noise loud and proud for Brave New Voices alum and Youth Speaks family. Y'all help me give it up for Safia. What's happening? Corazón, que lo como, que lo como, chile, sal y limón. Que me des, que me des, que me des tu corazón. Que lo como, que lo como, chile, sal y limón.
Nada me pertenece, nada me pertenece, mi amor, nada me pertenece, nada me pertenece, mi amor. Te doy mi mano vacía, mamá. Hi, my name is Safia El Hello. Um, I am so honored to be celebrating the release of this beautiful anthology with you all. I, of course, wish we were gathered to celebrate in person, but I am still so grateful that we get to gather in this virtual space to celebrate. Um, so I would love to read you some poems. Um, this first one is called, From My Friends in Reply to a Question. I'm okay, and of course I'm not but I go through the motions. I wake up to the alarm's howl, even when the word in my body is no. I dress in livid colors. I blacken the hairs of each eyebrow. I bake and braise and pickle. I write and read and lose hours to the blur of the television. I sit for hours in the bath, my skin puckering. I don't know if I'll ever go home again. I don't know who I've seen for the last time. The Arabic comes back to me in streaks of paint verb forms and vocabularies I may never again have occasion to use. My days smudge into one another and it's not that I am afraid. It's as if I am watching it all happen below and I am somewhere above the room, wondering if the rice is burning. I am somewhere above the room, watching my new aches, watching the news as if I am reading it in a novel. I look up the names of people I knew in childhood, learn their new and angular faces, their faraway lives. My grandfather pixelates into a smile and I work my creaking muscles to replicate it. I do not ask if we will ever meet again. I do not ask him to read to me or for anything that will make me long. I dull it with sugar and oil, with cooking shows, with sleep. I sleep 12 hours each night and in my dreams I am fleeing a war. In my dreams I am touching the faces of my friends. We are each one of us touching and even in the dream we are afraid. Modern Sudanese Poetry My husband works his fingers into the knot muscled against my spine, and my dead stay dead. My hair a knotted cursive language, my ligature, my grief barely literate, my amulets knotted around my neck and wrists, my language, my language, cursive and silent, glottal and knotted and scarring the cheeks of my dead, adorning the hair of my dead tallow in their braided hair. I read the books in translation, where is the poem, and circle every word I know, acacia, lupin, sandalwood, and ash. They ululate, my dead. They squat like brides over clay pots of smoke, a yoke suspended in each open eye. And some, in truth, are not dead, my dead. And I am who is lost, who is not counted among the living. The poem is not owed me. I was wed in all the colors of my dead, the reddening, the borrowed gold. I wrote the poem in translation. I wrote the poem in the loophole. I wrote the poem in cursive. I snarled it. I picked apart the threads and wove a shroud. I was wed in it. I unfastened. I broke my fast with apricots, furred like the ears of my dead. I looked laterally for ancestors. I descended left and right. I read the book in Arabic, knew each letter and its sound and did not recognize the words for tallow, for ululate, my dead, my languages, my ligatures, smoke in my loosened hair. This poem is called Arm's Length. Though to a child of fleeing people, my husband has never held his name and body at arm's length at an airport. We looked at maps, taking turns with the middle seat, summered in old cities, held hands at the airport. In that famous city of romance, we folded in with the other immigrants, spiced food and blue smoke, shisha a perfume in the air. Portmanteau is a game we played in transit, the mischief found in Christopher. I left loving that old city, even when I was searched at the airport. When we were first married, he would dream of all the places we might live. Security arriving again after I'd boarded to remove me from the airplane for a third search. My clothes scattered around the jet bridge, shame swelling in my throat. It's a joke by now, the Muslim at the airport. All the places we might live. Healthcare and a metro. Do we speak the language? 
cost of renting an apartment, its proximity to an airport. Twice, already pregnant, my mother on a long ago flight, turbulence and nausea in return for passports for her children, our ease in every airport, while she stayed behind to be searched, headscarf in the wrong papers. My brother and I, American and killing time, eating fast food at the airport. After that election, after each new video where we die, we consider our ancestral work of leaving, bored of destinations like a menu at the airport. He has his heart set on it, that city, my husband, it's long afternoon, sunset two hours before midnight, and I can't. It was one time, but still, the airport. They hate Muslims in that country, I eventually say. My exalted passport, just paper, ugly shade of blue, and everywhere in the world. The airport, the place where it is most plainly said, but not the only. So where is there for us to go, for me and mine? Name I cannot help, and cannot hide what it reports. And now it feels so far away, that place, that portal. I surprise myself by longing. The world, everyone, everything I love, kept from me on the other side of an airport. And this last poem is Ode to Sudanese Americans. Basma and Rudy were first, each holding a mirror in her arms, where I could see my face as their faces. And we pierced our noses and wore gamarboba in our ears, and everyone at the party thought them hoop earrings. And in the New York years, I crowd smoky bars alongside Ladin and Shadin and Majid and Linda and Nidal, Athil and Amir and Al Khair and Mo and Muhammad, and Mo, and we are forever removing our shoes in each other's apartments, ashing cigarettes into the incense burner, making tea with the good dried mint our mothers taught us to keep in the freezer, next to the chili powder from home, making songs and dinner and jokes in our parents' accents, and I'm funniest when I have two languages to cocktail, when I can say, remember, and everyone was there, the rented room at the middle school on Sundays, where our parents volunteered to teach us Arabic, to watch us bleat alif, ba, ta, fa, and text our American boyfriends that we were bored. And at restaurants, everyone asks if we are related, and we say yes. We do not date because we are probably cousins. We throw rent parties and project the video where Al Balabil sing guitar shog, and I am not the only one crying, not the only one made and remade by longing. The mutation that Arabic makes of my English, metallic noises the English makes of my Arabic. We ululate at each other's weddings, we ululate at the club, and Sarah and Hanat make the mulah vegan. And in English, Sophia spells her name like mine, but pronounces it like purified, sews a patch of garmasis to the back of my denim jacket. We wash our underwear in the sink and make group texts on WhatsApp. We go home and take pictures of the pyramids. We go home and take pictures of the Nile. We move to other cities and feel doubly diasporic. And your cousin's co-worker's little sister emails me a list of bigalas in Oakland, brings me crates of canned fava beans from her own parents' basement. And I say Sudanese-American and mean also British Sudanese, and Canadian and Australian and raised in the Gulf, Azza and Yusra and Amani and Yasmin. And it's true that my people are everywhere. The uncles driving taxis at the end of our nights, the pharmacist who fills my prescription, who is named for the mole denoting beauty adorning her left cheek, guardian spirits of my every hookah bar, of my every untagged photograph, of crop tops and short shorts and pierced cartilage and tattoos, of henna and headscarves and undercuts and shaved heads, my tapestries, embroidered with hundreds of little mirrors, glinting like sequins in the changing light. Thank you all so much. Congratulations on the anthology. Yes, yes, and yes. Praise, snaps, all the love for our family, Safia. Thank you so much. I'm always blown away by your tenderness and ferocity on the microphone. Your voice carries so much power, so much truth, so much uh, grit, and we appreciate you for your time and your words. Um, if y'all was digging that, let Safia know in the chat what you what you were feeling, um, how, how it moved you, how it made you feel, and if you really feeling so moved, order Safia's new young adult novel, Home is Not a Country, and her first full-length poetry collection, The January Children, at your local bookstore. 
heard it here, your local bookstore. I right? Amazon getting enough orders, so find your bookstore, help them stay open, help them support artists and authors like Safia, like these young folks that you heard from tonight, because wow, y'all, I can't believe. But that is a wrap. We done closed our show. Such an amazing show. And I can't help but to, to make sure that we thank everyone who made this possible. You know, shout out our production squad. You feel me? Give it up for the production team, Joni, Britt, and Max. Thank y'all so much. Thank you to our audience for tuning in from wherever you're at. You could have been anywhere else on this Friday evening, but you're here with us. And for that, we are so grateful. Thank you to all of our poets and their ancestors and elders for carrying them this far. You feel me? Thank you to not only the poets who read tonight, but all of those who contributed to this anthology. This wouldn't have been possible without y'all. Um, and want to shout out, you know, some of the, the staff members that helped make this anthology possible okay we see you nick james gabriel sandy Priti, jada all our co-editors shout out jason smith bijou and our ed christy johnson limon and spokes you feel me uh the one and only youth advisory board shout out to the whole you speak staff for all of the things man dan our, our uh operations manager we just we really couldn't do any of the things that we do without every single individual um that's a part of this organization a part of this family a part of this squad so shout out y'all shout out all the homies and the peers and the educators and the good friends who spread the word and submitted pieces we appreciate you we are uh, eternally grateful for everything that you contribute to your own communities and networks and helping us um, spread ours. So just a reminder, you can follow us on social media at Youth Speaks. That's one word, Y-O-U-T-H-S-P-E-A-K-S. -E and you can also buy the anthology on shop.youthspeaks.org or at our Patreon, patreon.com slash youth speaks. Keep an eye out for how you can order a physical copy. And we'll get them out to you as soon as we can. And in the meantime, until then, we're going to be rocking and rolling and seeing y'all real soon. Appreciate you. This has been a Youth Speaks production because the next generation is speaking for itself. All we got to do is listen, y'all, and act accordingly. One love. So please, if you please, be generous with the Hennessy. I mean, if you mean on the mic, you was a friend of me. I lean into meanings of life. Like, are you kidding me? Give me some tree and a pipe. I'll start admitting things. Isn't just the ugly and nice that's feeling hindering. Couple shit in front of my eyes is steady rendering. Don't got a clear picture. Won't ask a clear swisher. I'm off that. Get that tobacco up off my back. My cough back. Cough and tell a cozy matter of fact. The off ramp been closed so often for the revamp. I'm heaven sent. But my guy forgot the stamp, so I'm stuck in Brooklyn to Brooklyn, I don't know better Lately it's been hard knowing I'm from better weather But it's grind time, ain't no gully than gritty Word to Kerm, cause these niggas gon' figure deal me I'm stuck though, from East Oakland, so I am cutthroat What's up though, my main opponent got me in jump rope So want your lame component of looking dumb though I'm humble, let me just mumble if only jump rope I'm stuck though, from East Oakland, so I am cutthroat What's up though, my main opponent got me in jump rope
got me in jump rope. Don't want your lame component of looking dumb, though. I'm humble. Let me just mumble up on the trump up. This the anthem for the mumbling man, for the hungry homies who hustle cause ain't no other plan. Be an understatement if I told you that I overstand. Trying to bag the beat, but my drummer gone. I lost my band. Lucky almost left me too. Said she met a nigga who got to know what to run through. I've been stuck with nothing new, just anxious insecurities. Worries for the birdies beat. Never taught the birds it beats. Singers never murdered me. Singers haven't heard of me. Stay just steady curving me. I've been smoking in Berkeley. Brooklyn broccoli is dirty green. Produce hella gully. I'm just trying to get my health on. When the boys come knocking. You know I'ma get my stealth on I'm stuck though From East Oakland So I am cutthroat What's up though My main opponent Got me in jump rope Still want your Lame component Of looking dumb though I'm humble Let me just mumble If only jump up. I'm stuck though From East Oakland So I am cutthroat What's up though My main opponent Got me in jump rope Still want your Lame component Of looking dumb though I'm humble Let me just mumble If only